We have therefore mobilized all the human, financial, and whatever other resources that are required to make sure that one, we account for every child who was in the school that fateful morning, that fateful night. Secondly, to ensure thorough and deliberate investigations are done conclusively to establish what exactly caused the fire that brought us the death of so many of our young children. As I said on Friday afternoon, the government has nothing to hide. And we will do whatever it takes to come to the truth and nothing but the truth. We must know what happened. Some progress has been made. I don't want to preempt the progress which has been made because the relevant agencies will be communicating that progress. The DCI is in charge of the seat of crime and they have been doing a good job. Uh, 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 Mr. Nyuguto here, who is the director of the homicide unit and their other colleagues all the way to the director of DCI himself. They know the directive that has been issued is that we must go out of our way to establish what exactly caused that fire. The scene of crime has been visited by so many senior officials that is a manifestation of the commitment of government and the seriousness to which the government takes uh, this uh, tragedy. The deputy president has been there, the ministers have been there, PSCs have been here, the county government, I think the governor of this county has been literally present almost every other day, and all the other teams. Uh, and this is uh, a sign of... Uh, uh, commitment uh, uh, to make sure that uh, we do not abandon the affected families at the hour of need. The second issue is to say that now that um, that has, is going on at the scene of crime, we have ongoing um, uh, work here in this facility, which is um, a number of activities which have taken place, first and foremost, uh, this hospital, the Narumoro Level 4 Hospital, um, uh, is the place where our brothers and sisters from the Red Cross have been able to support, uh, and the other counselors from other agencies have been able to support the affected families with psychosocial supports, counseling, and the ability to assist them come to terms with this tragedy and this loss, which of course is irreplaceable. Yesterday, there were counseling sessions here and I'm told they went on very well. And we are very happy that uh, a tragedy as serious as this, we are able to pull together as a country and support uh, families that are affected uh, so that they are not left alone at the hour of need. In this hospital also, uh, the work which um, is going on, um, first I'm informed by the government pathologist, Dr. Johansson Dundwar, who is here, and the government chemist. The samples, uh, DNA samples, have been collected for all the 21 fatalities and uh, given the 
facilitation that has been given by the government as uh, the president directed that we do uh, it is possible in a not so long period to be able to match those DNA samples with the bodies of our dear children who perished in that fire so that after that the bodies can be released to their loved ones for final rites of resting them. Today, I've also been informed we have been able to proceed with autopsy of the 21 uh, bodies and the remains of our children who are in this mortuary. And I'm told again, I think we are almost at the tail end. Uh, we've done quite a bit of post-bottom. I think only a few bodies are remaining. I therefore want to thank, on behalf of government, all those who have made the burden lighter on the families that are affected. We don't take it for granted. Kenya Red Cross, thank you. Kemri, government chemist, government pathologist, DCI, homicide, forensic, the county government of Nyeri, through the governor, the CEC for health is here, and the other colleagues, councillors, morticians. It has taken the effort of many, many, many of us, the police, the Ngao team, they have all done a, a good job. And therefore, as we continue to mourn these children, I want also to appreciate the support we've got from the community here uh, around the school, but generally in Nyeri County. They have taken this matter with a sobriety that um, that it deserves and we've not had a lot of excess uh, or out of the way issues and before i end my remarks because what brought me here this afternoon was first to visit the teams that are here to encourage them and to reaffirm and reassure them that the government appreciates what all of you are doing here. And this is work like no other. This is not an ordinary job. I've just come from inside this mock. And to work in this kind of environment, even if it is your profession, you require special grace and special sacrifice and therefore I just want to thank all of you because if you didn't do what you're doing we will not have the closure and the truth that we are looking for it will not be possible because there's no one to do investigations or they are not committed to it and so forth and so on so I want to therefore thank all of you I want to appreciate you and reaffirm and reiterate the support of government uh, to this cause. I have noted also that uh, even the community has been very, very understanding. And even if the, most of the grief is from this locality, uh, there is a way in which uh, the community here appreciates that we are all together in this grief. However, I have seen some, some uh, statements made by some unknown people through social media about numbers. And I want to put the record straight.
for the avoidance of doubt. And I would like to say the following, that a matter like this is a national security matter. That's why you are seeing us here. If it wasn't a serious national security matter, the security minister will not be coming here every two other days. He'll be somewhere else where there is a, a security matter. And being a national security matter, we have made it very clear that we have nothing to hide. We will provide information on a daily basis, but what we have asked for is that that, coordination, that information be given in a coordinated way so that all the agencies collect the information and one of our colleagues who is here on that particular moment when the information is being released is able to share it with the members of the public as accurately and as verifiable as it can get. So far, I have seen some statements not associated with uh, uh, any known person, because these are posts in social media about numbers. I want to appeal to the people of Kenya, including the people in the social media, to take national security and public safety issues with a little more sensitivity and decorum. We can joke about many things, about many things, especially in this country where we like doing politics and doing and arguing and disagreeing on many things, which is a good thing in itself. But when it comes to serious things like death of our people, it is such a serious matter that you would be a very heartless human being to try and trivialize and cast as passions or try to make that matter look like it's a small matter which is subject to banter and debate. I repeat, security communication is sensitive. It must be done carefully by the right person who has the authority to say that. There are some things even myself I cannot say. I will defer to the relevant agencies to say it themselves. So let us be careful because it is clear, dear Kenyans, it is clear that we lost children and it is bad. It is a bad thing. We just hope it never happened. It is unfortunate it happened. But it is also clear that now we are in a good place to confirm the numbers of the affected children who are in that dormitory. When I came on Friday, I, there was a lot of push, especially from the media, for me to say how many children are where, and I resisted that temptation deliberately. And I said, I'm sorry, I, even if I disappoint you, I will not give you that information that time because we were still reconciling. Some children had ran to neighbors, some other children had been picked by parents, some children we suspected were still trapped. They had already died and they were in the scene of crime, which we had not started processing. So it would have been very reckless for me to come and say, okay, this is the number uh, of children that are affected this way or that way. But today, I am reliably informed that that process of reconciliation and accountability of the numbers is complete that on the school, that school, and let me read so that I also don't run the risk of, uh, of uh, getting it different.
The kids that were enrolled in this school, 843. Out of the 843, the children who were enrolled as boarders, as children sleeping in the school, 330. meaning the balance were day scholars. Out of the 330 children or pupils who were boarders, boys, 164, girls, 166. The dormitory that burned down was the boys' dormitory, which had or was supposed to have all the boys, and the number I've given is 164. Out of the boys who were supposed to be in that dormitory, the 164, 143 are alive. And out of the 143, 140 are with their parents. Three are still receiving treatments and we believe they will be released to their parents as soon as they are certified, fully recovered by the doctors. And therefore, 140 of the boys are with their parents, three in hospital, total 143. The fatalities, 21 children, unfortunately, perished in that fire. Any other person trying to play whatever game, trying to advance some whatever other statistics, is a heartless criminal and an enemy of the society. Because when we are hurting at a time like this, this is not the time to bring triviality. Once more, the government regrets the tragedy that struck our children at Hillside and the Russia School. The government sympathizes with the affected families. The government will support those families to ensure there is closure and to ensure there is justice because we will find the truth we will establish the truth of what happened. In the event that this catastrophic event was caused by a person, we will pursue and get justice on behalf of the families. And all those people who may have contributed to this tragedy through action, inaction, conduct, misconduct, advertently, inadvertently, will be brought to account. Na washukuru sana, na watakia baraka ya mwenyezi mungu, yaliyo tendeka hapa ni mamba ya kusikitisha, tunaomba radhi na kuwapatia pole, pole familia zote, silizo usika, kwa sasa, Watoto walio athirika kati ya watoto mianane arubaini na watatu walio kuwa katika shule hii ni watoto miatatu thalathini walio kuwa wanafunzi wa mabweni wa kulala. Kati ya hao miamoja sitini na nne walikuwa wavulana na Miamoja sitini na sita wasichana. 
bweni lililochomeka ni bweni la wavulana ambao nimesema walikuwa 164 kati ya hao tu e, watoto wa mawavulana 143 wako hai 140 wakiwa na wazazi wao watatu wakiwa hospitalini kwa bahati mbaya tumepoteza wavulana wetu na moja wamehifadhiwa katika chumba hiki cha kuhifadhia maiti upasuaji unaendelea tumechukua chembe chembe ambazo zitatumiwa katika ku, kujua kutambua miili ya wao watoto ili tuwapatie wazazi wao waende wakawapumzishe na serikali itatoa msaada wowote ambao utahitajika kusaidia familia hizi na shukuru vitengo vyote vimehusika katika kusaidiana katika utekelezaji wa kazi hii ikiwemo idara ya upelelezi wa jinai e, idara ya upasuaji e, wa maiti na idara zingine zikiwemo shirika la msalaba mwekundu serikali ya kaunti ya Nyeri na idara zingine zote zikiwemo vitengo vya usalama na maofisa wa utawala asanteni sana Mungu awabariki